Well, we'll, we'll get in, because this is almost approaching a, a cyber espionage. We'll get to that later okay. in the show here. Uh, let's do this. Let's, let's step it up now. Let's okay. move from the case study of, of uh, how to hack and, and, uh, and talk about some of the, the preventive measures for the banking industry. Let's step it up. Let's go to nuclear power plants okay. now. And uh, you mentioned the, the mindset. Yes. And I'm assuming there's something about your mindset that is 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 attractive to uh, someone who's running a nuclear power plant in terms of getting on their counterterrorism or cybersecurity team. Mm -hmm. and, and and that and that again, I want I want you to do is explain again to me what is that mindset? Well, the mindset of our professions is we have this information protection mindset. It becomes our ingrained culture that our job is to protect information. In a nuclear facility, the uh, big thing about a nuclear facility is what this thing called SSEP, which is stands for safety and safety related and emergency preparedness functions of the systems. So safety is big in nuclear facilities. And okay, and for our audience, explain, explain what the safety or the health risks are on a nuclear power plant if somebody gets in and takes over who has bad intentions. Right, so as you know, the, uh, the core part of the uh, nuclear facility is the nuclear core, right? Where it has this uh, um, uranium that is being used as fuel and it becomes irradiated once, become, when, once the fission process happens. And then, um, <clears throat> then um, those things need to be protected because there's a radiation, right? But before we get into that, uh, if you think about it, there are layers, physical layers of control within a nuclear plant, right? So I, as a nuclear facility, uh, I guess, uh, security professional, I have to pass all the background check and everything. And the first line of defense, the area that actually I work for is called owner control area. Then once I get in the next step is, it's an area called um, PA, protected area then you need the different qualification to get into that physical. You know, I have this picture of like this medieval castle. Yes. And it's got this outer moat. Correct. And then it's got this giant wall. Yes. And then inside there's another yes. another wall and yes. a building inside of the third wall. Correct. And each one of those they got to come through and pass some kind of guard. Correct. To get through that. Correct. Correct. But how, so, so in an electronic era, yes. you know, you don't have people physically running from one one wall to the next, opening the little window right, right, right. and talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, do they, how do they communicate within those various layers, which is what you're describing? Well, there's a still physical layers, right? Uh, but there's also electronic layers, right? But let's talk about the physical layers first so we can get a better idea. Like, so when I first get into my office area, I have this ID, right? Which is, in essence, is, is being authentic when I scan it is being authenticated electronically against a database, correct? Okay. So if that is being hacked, I can have a fake, a fake ID to get into this first line of defense. All right. When I go to the second line of defense, I need another authentication, which is a geometry. Okay. Yeah. So I need to register my hand first before I can get into the second area. So now my hand is being authenticated against my ID and the guard look at my face, so and it's nice, so everything is authenticated, right? Before I can get into the area. So there is a protection, but all of the hand geometry as I, I first when I registered is captured electronically to a database. Then when I is being authenticated, it's also being authenticated electronically. So why, when the communicate, every time there's a communication, there's the potential for, uh, for correct, a hacking. Correct, right? yes, right? Because you can intercept and then you can, you can do a lot of things. So this piece of equipment is considered CDAs in this particular example, the uh, hand geometry control equipment. Um, it's, it's classified as part of uh, CDAs, which is, stands for critical digital assets. What, what, what are some of the things that could go wrong, somebody who wanted to make a, a, a cyber attack on uh, one of the plants that you've been working on? The, and, and your work with a nuclear power plant, yeah. it's kind of like being on a counter-terrorism team, right, of right, some, right, some right, sort. Right, right. And so you're, you're both testing the system and trying to plug the holes and right, 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 that, right. Whole, that whole fire drill. 
Yeah, well, the, the biggest thing about, about any nuclear uh, facility is security, right? So is that, that concept of security, the layers of defense. Well, what can a hacker do? What, what kind of damage can they do with a nuclear power plant? Why, uh, is, it so, why, is, it, why is it at the, high, at the top of the pyramid for risk? Right, well, if you remember the Stuxnet. Uh, Stuxnet virus, this viruses. is the one where they had a... Uh, damaged some nuclear facilities right, in, right, right. in Iran, right? Correct, correct, okay. correct. And how, how did that happen? Because it was actually physically to a flash drive, right? Being attached to, so so a flash drive, like in any companies, if you have a virus in there, it can, could damage any computer system. Um, so if you are working inside a nuclear facility, usually they have a system before you can use this flash drive, you have to sanitize check, you know, do a health check on that flash drive before you can plug it into your computer system, right? So this is very strictly enforced. Non-nuclear facilities might have a policies, but they're not strictly enforced. But a nuclear facility is strictly enforced for that very reason. Because typically in the computer, I mean, in any plants, in, in the nuclear plant, you have basically, you also have a computer plant system that actually right. control the turbine. And there's a lot of digital equipment part of it. Talking with Mr. Amin Lehman, a United States nuclear power plant security consultant. <clears throat> and we're going to be talking, as we have throughout this whole program, about kind of that, that, the how-to and then what do you do to protect some of the essential businesses. And we've talked earlier in the program about uh, the whole banking industry and hacking into a bank and the, the, ways, that, the ways that hackers uh, get access. And we're now talking about the nuclear power plant. And uh, I mean, right at the break, uh, you you were talking about the the difference in the way a uh, nuclear power plant handles its security with with the uh, uh, badges that are hooked to a data network, mm -hmm. the geometric pattern on a what is it a fingerprint, right, a, right, right, and uh, and also the the security of not using a flash drives like we would in a right, right. In an ordinary <laughs> business, right, right, right. but. Um, I'm curious about a, uh, uh, this this whole technique called DDoS. Okay, have I pronounced that correctly? Yes. DDoS. Yes. This is uh, and what is this technique as as a as a type of a cyber attack on a uh, on a nuclear power plant, a critical business, right. or a bank? What is that all about? What is a DDoS attack? Well, generally a DDoS attack. Well, first of all, DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service Attack. So it's an attack against your email system. So typically, if you're Microsoft, Microsoft shop, you have an Exchange server. So the idea is flooding your email system with uh, millions of emails. So then your email system stop to function. When it stops, you know, I feel that way that I've been attacked uh, every morning when I come into my office. I look at how many emails I got. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So and this is kind of right, been a little right, stepped right. up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So imagine, and then each email system has a quota, right? You can't have as unlimited space. Right. So when that space is being filled up, the whole server is being filled up, and it just stops functioning and breaks down the whole email system. So you brought up a very interesting point. As you come to the office, what's the first thing you do? You check your email. If you cannot check your email, you're going to go crazy, right? So yeah. the business stop stop functioning. Now, so the email system is very very important. So in the, take take this an example. If it's, if it's in a nuclear plant, if you cannot communicate with the email system, we have other ways to communicate. By the way, so no problem. There's a phone. There's a radio. So there are backup methods okay. in the plant okay. itself. The plant itself is safe. The plant itself is safe from from that perspective. From the office function, right? Because the plant has a lot of built in or not built in backup system, right? There's all kind of ways. Um, but in terms of the DDoS, why is it so important is it actually attacks the main system and it kind of occupies the, the whole uh, computer team to uh, resolve that situation. Okay, so what if there's a DDoS attack mm -hmm. on a nuclear power plant and the email system is shut down? Then what? I guess uh, the worst thing that could happen is that uh, it might just be a confusion for, for a little bit on, on how to... Uh, what kind of, you know, it's probably just temporary. And again, it doesn't impact the plant itself because the plant itself is self-contained, you know, the operation of the plant itself. But uh, potentially from the outside, if there are simultaneous attack, that might prohibit people to exchange information. Right? What, what's the, what's the, in the, the real danger category of cyber attacks on a nuclear power plant 
for an essential. What, what are the things that, you, that scare you the most? I think one of the uh, you know big protection in any nuclear plant is uh, the, we do have a radiation monitoring system, right? Radiation monitoring, right? Okay, so, in, so, in, so if you, which has a digital equipment that, that part of that with its computer or laptop or whatever system or, or plant, uh, a piece of equipment that has a critical digital assets. So if you hack to that and then your monitoring system is not producing an, a, a, an accurate reading, then you have a problem. Right? So that could be a problem. Right? But a lot of built-in uh, control within the nuclear plant uh, will, pre uh, will prevent um, a major damage or you know, anything like that. Is there a is there a, a cybersecurity Stuxnet type uh, fear that you have of of getting into the the reactor itself and causing some malfunction? Well, here's the thing, right? Uh, if you uh, any reactor system needs cooling, so it's usually being you know in some facilities near the ocean. So you use you pump the ocean water to cool it, uh, and the cooling will prevent all kind of potential negative effects. Which is what the problem that happened at Fukushima. Right. So if you hack to that system, right, a hacker hacked to the cooling system, so the cooling system is not functioning properly, then you'll have a problem with the reactor, correct? Uh, if a hacker somehow put a, uh, a virus into the plant computer system, the turbine might not stop, it might stop working. It might create, uh, send all kind of problems. So there's potential physical problems. When a nuclear power plant is set up and licensed to operate, do they have some kind of procedures that they go through that are required cybersecurity walls that have to be set up? Uh, yes, yeah, so basically all 100 plus US licensed nuclear units, we call it, they, have, they are regulated by the NRC and they all submitted a plan uh, of their uh, critical systems. And without getting technical, the guidance that we use, the NEI 08 09, that's the guidance. Sounds technical to me. They're very technical. So, <laughs> so they all have to submit that. I think uh, most of them submitted uh, by sometimes in August 2010. What is that, a cybersecurity plan of some uh, kind? Yeah, a cybersecurity plan, correct. So basically, the cybersecurity plan has uh, eight milestones. Milestones mean commitments, meaning that here, I am as a nuclear facility, I will commit that I'm going to do this eight eight milestone, eight commitments. The first commitment is I have to establish a team called CSAT, which stands for uh, Cybersecurity Assessment Team, which consists of you know the plant engineers, the Cybersecurity Assessment Team. Uh, uh, so are you on I, that team? I'm on that team, correct. Okay. Yeah, I'm on that team. So the team objective is to accomplish all the assessments that are required by the milestones. And the thing is, uh, when you submit it to the NRC, then the NRC will tell you, okay, David, your facility, based on this, we review all the requirements that by 2015, December, you have to comply with all of these. Otherwise, you don't have a license to operate. Everything is regulated and licensed by the NRC. So, strictly enforced. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean, 